Once you're finished working in Control Room 2, you'll need to clean it up and reset all of the equipment to default conditions so it's all ready for the next set of users. Clean up all your scripts, rundowns, and other paperwork so that the desktop is clear. Also, push in all the chairs. Head to the far end of the control room, the VTR area. Eject all of your tapes from both the playback VTRs and the record VTR. If you used a DVD for playback, don't forget to take that with you as well. Reset the VTR edit controller by using the event 9999 shift enter method. Once again, find the event button, push it, then 9999 on the numeric keypad, hold shift, and push enter. Turn down the volume controls on the edit monitor speakers, directly above the edit controller. The video switcher may look complicated, but it's actually very easy to reset to its default conditions. First, at the far left side of the switcher panel, make sure that all of the video buses are in black. You don't need to select anything on the direct bus. Make sure all the fader bars are in the down position, and if there's anything glowing in the DSK area, just push the glowing button to turn off that feature. Finally, at the numeric keypad, push 1, and then to the left, Recall Panel. Once you've done this, you'll see Recall Pan 1 in the video switcher display. Above the switcher are the camera control units. Close the irises on all three cameras by turning the iris control fully counterclockwise. The 6x2 router above the camera control units can be set to anything you need it to be. Usually we default it to Globecaster or Studio One for both output rows. The 12x1 router near the director's intercom station should be set to either Program DA1 or Program DA2. The 6x1 router marked as Globecaster Input 4 should have Inscriber CG selected. For the director's intercom panel, make sure that the microphone is pointed slightly up and away from the rest of the panel. This will reduce the risk of audio feedback. The mic select switch should be set to panel. The volume control pots for channel A and channel B should be up around the 10 o'clock position. The talk lights for both channels should be lit. Push these buttons if they're not. We don't have program audio routed back into the intercom system, so you should leave the program audio turned all the way down, around the 7 o'clock position. The speaker, however, should be turned on, and there's no need for you to adjust anything with the side tone controls. If the clock timer is running, stop it, then push reset. Save your work on the Inscriber computer. Then when you're done, go to File and say New. If you're asked to remove online files, you can say yes. Once you've done this, you'll see a blank, untitled project. If you've opened any other programs on the Inscriber computer, such as Photoshop, or you've logged into an email account, make sure that you're logged out and all other open programs are closed. Also make sure to eject any flash drives or USB drives from the computer. When you leave the Inscriber computer, the only thing that should be running is a blank project in the Inscriber software. The Globecaster interface, much like the video switcher, may seem intimidating, but it's actually very easy to bring back to default conditions. First on the busing area, choose black on aux, but don't push black on key P or key. These entire buses should be unselected and empty, no blue highlighting. Black in program and preview are what you should select. Every once in a while on the Globecaster, Choosing black will cause a color such as blue or green to show up instead of black. If this happens, simply use the color picker under the matte key option to choose black and then put the matte key in program and preview. You also need to stop any DSK or other effects. To do this, click the green square to stop the animation. It may take a few seconds depending on the length and type of animation, but it will stop. Then. Right-click in the middle of the Effects Picon window and choose Unload All Effects. For DSK, unload every DSK. Head back to the main Windows desktop by clicking the Minimize button in the Globecaster Switcher interface. Log out of any email accounts and close all other running programs. When this is done, 
The switcher should be the only item in the taskbar. Click it to restore the Globecaster switcher interface. When you're all done, it should look something like this. At the audio rack, eject any CDs out of the CD player. If it's the Newscast Music Sample CD that always stays in the control room, put it back in its case and then put the case in the cubby hole at the top of the rack. Also stored here are the studio wireless microphones. At the patch panel, make sure that Tone Out on the top row is connected to Console Patch on the bottom row. The audio console has quite a few buttons, dials, and switches, much like the video switcher, but resetting it isn't that difficult. At the top of each microphone channel is the Mic 2 switch. Make sure that it is not depressed. In the routing section for each channel, Group 2 and Program should be the only ones selected. EQ and the high pass filter should be off. Set both the pan and gain controls to zero, the 12 o'clock position. Bring down all of the channel faders. You should bring down the submaster and master faders as well. Finally, check the monitoring section. Ensure that the volume controls are about halfway up at the 12 o'clock position and nothing is dimmed or muted. When you're done at the audio console, turn off the light. Before you leave the studio and control room facility, make sure that the on-air light is no longer lit. The switch for this control is behind where the audio operator sits. If the light switch is glowing, the on-air light isn't. Please refer to this video as needed to make sure you know how to return control room 2 and all of its equipment to default conditions.